going on guys wanted to film uh, at least one more update for you on the heat treat oven uh, now that i can uh, at least personally say that i've got it finished uh, i really don't anticipate uh, any further work on this uh, at least for a while uh, and hopefully not until i upgrade the pid controller to something uh, a little bit nicer uh, but for now uh, it is complete it is usable and I uh, did a couple of more things since the last update. I just wanted to uh, briefly go over uh, as well as talk about uh, kind of the methods I used uh, specifically with applying an ITC 100 coating to the inside of the chamber. And uh, I know I mentioned uh, possibly in the last heat treat of an update, but for sure in uh, one or two of my shop update videos, I mentioned getting some to try out. Uh, to see if I could maybe improve the inner efficiency. And uh, I guess the question is uh, whether it worked or not, and uh, we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail momentarily. But uh, one thing I did do, and I also mentioned uh, planning on doing this as well, uh, I got some high temperature fiberglass sheathing uh, because the heating element lead ends uh, are bare. There's no insulation on them. And I didn't want them you know, potentially grounding out against either the oven shell, which is steel, or the switch box, uh, which is metal as well. And uh, I also added a couple of little ceramic insulators uh, right inside the uh, shell opening where the leads come into the boxes, uh, just to add some additional protection there as well. And uh, once I did that, I also crimped some tubing uh, onto the end of each element lead. Uh, kind of a poor man's electrical connector, really. Uh, but this passes pretty good current. So uh, I crimped one side onto the element, uh, and it was actually much shorter than this piece. This is just what I had left over. Uh, but uh, maybe a three quarter inch, one inch long tube. Uh, I crimped one side to the lead, uh, and then the other side to a strip back portion of this high temperature wire. Uh, and then on the front lead, I actually ran it through this conduit uh, into that rear box and out the side. Uh, I've got a little crimp connector on there, or Romex clamp. And uh, then I also crimped a piece of tubing onto the rear lead end that was sticking out. I uh, crimped another piece of high temp wire directly to it. Uh, and then I brought those out with some regular uh, spade connectors, uh, insulated spade connectors, as you can see and uh, connected those directly to my PID controller there. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty good connection. Uh, it will withstand any temperatures that the outside of the shell may see. And uh, I'll go ahead and put the temp gun on it in a moment as well. Uh, it's been uh, at 1575 for at least a good hour, hour and a quarter. Uh, and before that it was at 500 degrees for about four and a half or five hours. So uh, we'll see what it's reading here in a second. Uh, but I'm sure the big question, uh, at least that was on my mind and maybe on a lot of others, uh, was whether that ITC 100 is worth it or whether it did anything uh, to perceptibly change uh, the efficiency or operation of this oven. And uh, the proof, as they say, is in the pudding. And if any of you guys saw my last update where I showed the PID controller after soaking at set point for at least an hour or two then, uh, you may recall that it was swinging pretty noticeably. I had it probably a good plus or minus five or six degrees. Uh, so about a 10 to 12 degree temperature fluctuation at the least, uh, even after soaking at temp for a considerable amount of time. And uh, you can see right now it's been soaking at set point, like I said, for about an hour, hour and a quarter. And it's easily now holding within one degree or better. And it's actually been holding that stable since about even 10 minutes or better after hitting set point. So uh, I'd say it's definitely made a difference. Uh, it's certainly worth the price, uh, you know, given these results. Uh, I'm much happier with that. You know, not that a 10 or 15 degree fluctuation would have, you know, necessarily ruined anything. Uh, but I really wasn't seeing that on my oven that I had before. Now, to be fair, I did have a slightly different fire brick. It was a different manufacturer. Uh, it might have been a little bit more efficient. I also had a different element <clears throat> and uh, kind of a slightly different construction as well. 
Uh, so there were a few factors uh, that may have contributed. Uh, you know, these bricks, for instance, aren't mortared together like the other ones were uh, in my last oven. And uh, it's a slightly different geometry. Uh, it is a larger coil. So uh, there's a few differences there. Uh, but at the same time, I was still expecting a little bit better uh, temperature stability uh, given my controller there. And uh, one thing to also keep in mind, this is about the cheapest PID controller you can buy. Uh, they're about $25 on Amazon. Uh, it's a MyPin uh, T-Series. Uh, I forget the exact model number. I don't think it's even on there. But uh, like I say, they don't really get much cheaper than that. And uh, you can see it's actually doing a very fine job of keeping within one degree or better on that set point. So uh, as far as I can tell, this stuff is worth the price of admission. Uh, just this little pint jar here was about $50 shipped to my door. And uh, you know, you do have to mix it. Uh, and just to kind of go over the process, what I did, uh, I did take all the bricks back out. You know, I could have coated it as they were you know, I didn't want to waste any. I didn't want it dripping all over the place. So uh, what I did, I took all the bricks out, laid them flat out on this cardboard on the floor. I uh, took a five-gallon bucket and mixed, uh, I believe it's two parts ITC 100 to one part water. Uh, so I used some distilled water I had. Uh, mixed it up. It mixed it to about the consistency of a latex paint. Uh, mixed it very well, and then I just took a brush and brushed it on the interfaces, you know, where they would be facing the inside of the oven. Uh, completely coated every brick. And I actually just had enough uh, with this pint jar uh, to go ahead and coat all those bricks. And uh, see if I can show you how much. So that's what's left. I pretty much scraped every little bit of it out of there. And uh, I had very little left in my mixing bucket. So uh, for this design, uh, it ended up working out just enough. Now, I did not actually coat the inside of my door uh, because they do recommend against applying it directly to ceramic fiber insulation, which is what my door is made out of. Uh, at least not before you coat it with some kind of a rigidizer or a satinite or something like that. And uh, I'm actually counting on the compressibility or the flexibility of my insulation as it currently sits uh, to actually form a better seal uh, than maybe it would if it were rigid. So I didn't want to coat it and I didn't figure a little six by six patch uh, would make that big of a difference. Uh, and if anything, you know, coating the rest of the chamber uh, should at least do something to help. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it did. So. Uh, again, in my opinion, it is worth it. Uh, yeah, it's pricey for what it is. Uh, you know, if you bought all the raw materials that are in this uh, separately or by yourself, you could probably make this quite a bit cheaper. Uh, supposedly, it's got some bentonite clay, some aluminum powder, maybe one or two other things, or zirconia or ceramic powder. You know, I'm not sure. Nobody really knows for sure except ICT or, or ITC coatings. And, uh, you know, I figured by the time I went through the trial and error, trying to make the stuff and not even having anything to compare it to in the first place, uh, I would have spent well past the $50 they asked for the pint. So, uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, go for the tried and true. Spend a little bit of money. Uh, it's a one-time thing, or at least maybe once every few years, I imagine. Uh, I'd say it's worth it. And, uh, you know, maybe next time I'll play with my own little concoction or mixtures, but... You know, for now, to spend an extra $50, you know, at least on top of what I've already got tied up into this, uh, and to get that, you know, less than one degree fluctuation now, uh, I'm definitely happy with the purchase. And uh, what's really nice, they shipped it fast, you know, good communication as far as order confirmation, shipment, showed up to my house in just a couple of days, uh, FedEx ground. I think it was an extra $12. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm happy with the company, happy with the product. And uh, I would definitely recommend it to anybody else. Uh, and not just for heat treat ovens either. It's good for forges. 
Uh, I've read where guys who couldn't previously get welding temperatures in their homemade forges would add some of this to the lining and uh, they would then not only heat up faster but get to or even exceed welding temps uh, just from that coating addition alone. So uh, it's almost like one of those too good to be true products but uh, as far as I can tell it works and it's worth it. So uh, that's it guys. Uh, oh uh, one other thing uh, once I coated everything I used a paintbrush uh, to coat it on each face of the bricks. You know, they recommend a spray gun. You know, I've got an old Wagner sprayer. I never had much luck with it. Uh, they say to maybe even use like a texture sprayer or a sandblasting sprayer. Uh, I didn't want to mess with all that. You know, this is a small enough application. I'm just doing individual bricks. Uh, I use just a regular like horsehair brush or a paintbrush. And, uh, you know, once I mixed it, I just brushed it on, dabbed it on with a paintbrush, and that worked just fine. Uh, I let it air dry for a few hours, uh, really not even that long. It kind of soaked in and dried pretty quick. Uh, you know, I kind of wiped off any excess that was kind of floating on the surface, which was very, very minimal. Uh, and then I put everything back together in my oven, uh, wired it up, you know, got everything buttoned up nice. And uh, once that was done, I set my PID to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, I actually let that run for about four and a half to five hours uh, just to cook any additional moisture out of the coating. And uh, after that time, I just ramped immediately up to 1575. And uh, like I said, the change was immediate. You know, once that coating was baked on, uh, it held within a degree or two uh, almost from the start and then just the longer it soaked you know here now at uh, about an hour and 20 minutes uh, it's about as stable as I could ever expect and it may even be getting just a little bit better the longer it soaks I'm not sure but uh, that's really all I did uh, as far as application and putting it together uh, and it worked just fine uh, like I said, I would recommend, uh, and they don't explicitly state this, but I would recommend using a clean water. Uh, you know, I don't know what kind of contaminants or minerals that might be in tap water, uh, if that would affect anything. Probably not, especially once you bake it out. But uh, I use distilled water to mix it. Uh, seemed to work just fine. Uh, I've actually got to go sneak this back into the uh, wife's kitchen drawer. <laughs> this is what I use in a little drill to mix it up. Uh, worked just fine uh, and then actually I measured out my water uh, with this little quarter cup scoop and uh, you know it was pretty simple uh, you know it just took a morning to you know mix it up paint it on let it dry uh, and then once everything was together just letting the oven do its thing for a few hours uh, before bringing it up to set point so uh, I can safely say now I am ready for heat treating. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, get some knife blanks uh, cut out here pretty soon. We'll start putting this thing to the test. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually we'll shut the oven off and then before I go in I will uh, just briefly show you what it looks like. Uh, it's maybe a little bit darker, you know, as far as the surface. Uh, than the initial, you know, whiteness of the bricks. But it really doesn't look all that different. And uh, I can see maybe a little bit of a gap on that right-hand side. I might want to try to tighten those bricks up eventually. But, uh, oh, I did say, uh, again, this is about an hour and a half. Uh, running at 1575 and about four and a half to five hours at 500. Uh, we are still under 200 degrees. Uh, I'm going to come back out here in a couple hours and check it again. Uh, you know, the door is uh, still quite a bit cooler, uh, maybe 30 degrees less. Well, about one, 179, 180, 175, check underneath, 
uh, 186. Check the side. Uh, we're about 200 there. 198. And we're about 201, 200 there. I think we're getting a little bit of that conduit. It's still pretty cool. Uh, switch boxes, which I've got packed with insulation, they're only 135. Maybe 160 on the sides. A uh, little thermal camera camera would be really nice for this kind of thing. But uh, that's it, guys. Uh, I'm definitely happy, uh, much happier than I was. Uh, not that I wasn't happy before, but uh, I think we're going to have a pretty nice oven here. And uh, if anything changes, I'll let you know. But uh, definitely keep an eye out. I'm hoping to start heat treating some steel soon and uh, we'll get back into some knife making and some projects and uh, have some fun here. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching.